One of the strategies that you can use to divide two decimal numbers is an area model. So like all area models, we're gonna start with a box or an area. Um, the difference between a multiplication area model and a division area model are that in division, you don't have the numbers that are going to be up top. Instead, you have one number on the side, which is your divisor, which is in this case, seven tenths. The middle of your box is going to end up adding up to eight and 68 hundredths. And what the answer of this division problem is, is going to be whatever is going to be on top of your box. So with division, you basically just start with a guess. You say about how many times do I think seven tenths can fit into eight and 68 hundredths? So I like to tell my students to start with a friendly number. So numbers like 10, 20, 30, 100, 1,000, anything that's really easy to multiply. So a lot of the times they'll start with something like 10. So if I multiply 7 tenths times 10, I'm going to end up getting seven holes. I would move my decimal once to the right, so I would end up getting seven holes. So that's going to be the first section of my box. Now the key to an area model with division is you're going to end up putting your dividend, so eight and 68 hundredths on the side, and you're going to subtract out whatever you end up filling inside your box, because remember you're trying to get this number to be inside the box. So because I did seven tenths times 10 equals seven, I'm going to subtract seven holes from the start of my number. So I subtract, I get an eight, a six, I drop down my decimal and I get one. So the rest of my box needs to equal one and 68 hundredths. So from here, students will think about numbers that would make sense. So if I did 10 again, I would get another seven holes and I can't subtract seven holes away from one and 68 hundredths. So I know that I need to use a number much smaller. So they might say, okay, well, if I just multiply it by one, that's seven tenths, or they might recognize that they could do two of those so that they could multiply it by two holes. So seven tenths times two holes is going to be 1.4 or one and four tenths. So that gets me really close to this number. So I'm going to subtract out my one and four tenths I can fill in this blank space with a zero. Eight minus zero is eight. Six minus four is two. Drop my decimal and then one minus one is nothing. So I'm left with 28 hundredths. At this point, I should be able to recognize that my last box should be 28 hundredths. In order to get something less than what I started with, we're identifying that we're going to have to multiply by something that is less than one to get a smaller number because 28 hundredths is smaller than my divisor of seven tenths. So what I'm going to do is think about, okay, well, what is seven times what is 28 holes if I didn't have that decimal there? Then you should be able to recognize that seven times four is 28. So I need to decide is it going to be seven tenths times four tenths? Is it going to be seven tenths times four holes? Or is it going to be seven tenths times four hundredths? So which one of these makes the most sense? You should then be able to recognize that in the first one, I would have two decimal spaces, which is what I'm looking for. The second one would only have one and the third option would have three. So because I only have two decimal spaces here, the first one, seven tenths times four tenths, is going to be the one that works. So I'm going to put four tenths up top. Seven tenths times four tenths is 28 hundredths. And then from here, I could gather my answer. So again, these three numbers inside the box are going to equal our dividend. Our answer is actually going to come from the numbers on top of the box added up. So 10 plus two plus four tenths is going to be 12 
and four tenths. Now, just because I did it this way doesn't mean that every area model is going to look like this. You can have as many boxes inside or as many sections inside this box as you would like. You did not have to start with 10. You could have started with any number that got you close. You could have started with 12. You could have started with five. Again, if they didn't recognize that four tenths times seven tenths is 28 hundredths, they could have done one tenth and then subtracted out and then gone from there. So every area model looks different, but this is just the one that I did because it made the most sense to me.